The rewards for Dark Dimension 4 are very underwhelming. We're talking about that in this video. Plus, more rumors and more questions from the Discord server. So if you're ready for this edition of the Monday Mailbag, ladies and gentlemen, find that like button and you know what to do. Let's go smash it! Alley flying. Hello, all you beautiful Valley Maniacs. I am Valley Flying. Welcome back to the Valley Flying channel, and I hope you are doing well. You may notice this light is off, and the reason for that is, yes, I did it again. Scratch my eye in jujitsu practice, but luckily learned from the last time that had happened a few weeks ago. So stop training as soon as it happened. This time I actually did it to myself uh, and did not rub my eye thinking that it was something in my eye because I know how a scratch feels now. So hopefully this time uh, recovers a lot quicker, but that light is off for this video. And I actually kind of like the new light. Let me know what you think of just one light. Maybe I should, maybe this should be a trend. Maybe this was a happy accident that uh, has a positive outcome, but we have a lot to discuss in this video, guys. Dark Dimension 4 rewards there. Eh, very disappointing. Drew is back. And of course, all of your questions from the mailbag channel. But before we do that, it's time to pay some bills and hear from the sponsor of this video. What happens when you cross a blockbuster movie with a triple A rated game and squeeze it onto your mobile phone? Well, Raid Shadow Legends is what happens. Now, Raid has over 450 unique champions, each one of them fully animated with help from their in-house motion capture studio. Now, one of the best things I like about Raid is building up my champions like this guy right here. Tayrell, yes, one of the best epic champions in the game because he is very good in every single game mode. And as you can see, I have a few different sets on him right now. Accuracy, speed, because as good as he is, he gets even better with a lot of accuracy and a lot of speed. One of the cool new features in development right now for Raid is the Doom Tower. 120 floors of some tough boss battles like the Frost Spider, the Magma Dragon, and the Tomb Crab. Ooh, I cannot wait to start battling these guys. And if you can't wait either, click on that special link in the description to check out Raid for yourself. And if you're a new player, it gets even better because you're gonna get 100,000 free silver and the free champion channeler. Yes, this guy is very good as a starter champion and in this spirit keep. And all of your treasure, it's gonna be waiting for you right here. But do not wait, click on that link. It's only gonna be available for the next 30 days. So what are you waiting for? Yeah, so big shout out to the folks over at Raid for sponsoring this video, supporting this channel. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's go talk about these very, very underwhelming rewards for Dark Dimension 4. Here it is. Five gold orbs, one mega orb, 200 orange assembly, orange ability materials, one elite five star orb, and you get these. I'm assuming kind of like Dark Dimension 3, you get one of these rewards per node. So the final sum of all these totals of all these rewards 35 gold orbs, which is, is kind of underwhelming considering all the gold that it takes to actually get into Dark Dimension 4. Four mega orbs. I mean, for anybody that's entering Dark Dimension 4 anytime soon, these mega orbs don't hold a lot of value. So this is, this is very underwhelming. Elite five star orbs again. We had that in Dark Dimension 3. I was hoping that we'd get more of these, maybe elite sixes, maybe more promotion credits, maybe more gold promotion credits, silvers or gold, both of them are good, but uh, we, we got this. Very, very similar rewards to Dark Dimension 3, except for instead of getting the silver and gold promotion credits, we're getting Dr. Doom. So uh, Do Doom is good, but the rest of this stuff, very very underwhelming so hopefully there's enough of an outcry from the community that uh these these get changed let me know what you think of these rewards guys personally i think they're pretty bad except for dr doom himself but without further ado let's get to all of your questions from the mailbag on the discord server and i do want to thank each and every one of you that left a question if you want your question potentially featured in an upcoming episode make sure you join the discord the link is down below but without further ado first question of the week ladies and gentlemen it is been one of those weeks after barely scraping by i unlocked anti-venom on the last day that is awesome stuff very good character my question prepping for a dark dimension 2 what is the best team for this mode so far i have captain marvel minerva dr strange i'm thinking hella sinister thanos starlord rocket and groot taking two teams on the first run um 
that that maybe help you get you through dark dimension two first but uh or sooner but i would recommend probably just going with what you have you have captain marvel minerva doctor strange I'm not sure how great doctor strange is in that mode but uh if i were to build up two more characters from the list you have hella stands out because not only is she's a good character has a lot of damage greg greg is going to help with that survivability especially if the ai is going after greg and not going after one of your teammates uh the sinister thanos they have some value depending on what your other teams look like but star lord is the original energy battery for minerva so i would keep captain marvel i'll keep minerva i'll keep dr strange you already have them there just go with what you have might be a little slower you might want to start building up some other characters for this mode with dark dimension three in mind so if you're thinking of taking these characters in dark dimension three you can start to build them right now especially sinister thanos but i would go with captain marvel minerva dr strange round it out with hella for greg starlet for his energy battery that's what i'll do and then once you're in then you can start building some other characters to gear 13 gear 14 for dark dimension 2 and for dark dimension 3 brother uh next question though boom quick question is there a better version of the sinister six that's better than the one that includes a ministerial and different matchups so uh the version i run i think is the more the most popular version that has dr octopus electro swarm i think that is the base three now you can make an argument for these next two characters possibly based on your red stars possibly based on what content you're trying to do but i think uh, the most popular is the version that you're talking about with mysterio with rhino and i'm not sure if that is the best version i know that is the most popular version that is the version that i use uh but just keep in mind that if you're running a different version of the sinister six remember miss uh dr octopus is going to summon in a particular order first summon it's gonna be shocker if there's no shock if there is a shocker already on the field he's gonna go with vulture if there's both of those on the field he's gonna go with wino so keep that in mind in determining your team based on your red stars but i i still i do think that the best version is the most common one that does include mysterio brother next question just unlock invisible woman nice uh, where can I use her and how far would you recommend building her in terms of power levels? So in terms of power levels, uh, keep in mind that you're going to need a lot of orange gear for Dark Dimension 2, 3, and 4. So I would definitely build her up to gear tier 12. And after that, it, it's going to be dependent on how much orange gear you have and how close you are to entering one of these Dark Dimension, uh, other other Dark Dimensions, 2, 3, or 4. Uh, anyway with that said that's that's where i'll build or save up as much of your orange gear as possible but what teams can you use your own obviously on a fantastic four uh the namor version i i some people are doing very well with the she hulk version if that she hulk is beefy enough but I remember that that's pretty much all where I use her now. But I do remember when I used to use her before some of these newer characters came out, like the Black Order, uh, some of these other characters like Symbiotes that I'm using in the Rays right now a lot. Invisible Woman was a staple in some hybrid teams for Ultima 7. So you could use her there in some of the raids, and hopefully that will help you uh, with that because she does have that barrier. She has some counterattacks. She has offense down. She does a lot, so she helps with the protection of your team. Next question. Been hoarding purple, gold, orange, uh, gear orbs, and not opening any desperately until they need the gear pieces. The only reason I hoard them is in case we have an event where opening orbs is the way to get through the milestone similar to the one with negasonic and the chimichangas with all that said do you think an event like this will come soon with the holidays coming up or should i just open the orb so here's here's my thing if you need any of the orbs don't hoard them get the value right now whether it be gold training mats or anything that's that's my general advice for players now for you it doesn't sound like you need a lot of these materials so if you don't need any materials just hold the orbs because Fox Next, aka Scopely, they have made known that uh, these milestones events occur every so often. So uh, you're, you're going to have some value in holding particular orbs that you don't need right away. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, we had an avalanche orb opening in 2018. We had an orb avalanche around the holiday of 2019. So two holidays in a row, which would make me believe that this holiday season in 2020, we're getting another orb opening event. So uh, it could be right around the corner. So if you don't need any orbs, I, I think it would be worth just waiting to see if we have an event coming up. But uh, that would be my advice, brother. Uh, if you need this stuff in the orbs, open it right away. If you could wait and not really see a uh, hit to your roster in terms of what you're able to do, then just wait. 
Next question. Greetings from Hamburg, Germany. Do you think they will put Cull Obsidian into the war store? I think they could capitalize on gold needed if they replace Emma in the milestones with him and selling those gold orbs. So uh, they they could. As far as where I think Cull Obsidian will end up, uh, I think the war store is the most likely. We just had Doom Chapter 2 added and... Yeah, I don't think they're going to put him in Chapter 3. I don't think they're going to wait. I don't think they're going to give us him the Colossus treatment of making him farmable, that key piece of that team, making him farmable over a year after he comes out into the game. So I think he's going to go to the War Store, but I could be wrong on that. Maybe he does get the Colossus treatment. We will have to see. A lot of lot of these uh, decisions, Fox Next... I, I keep saying Fox Next. They're Scopely. Scopely, they keep their cards very close to their chest, so we, we don't know a lot of these things, but my guess would be the uh, War Store, brother. Uh, next question. My Alliance has been having a lot of discussions about ISO 8 lately. Care to weigh in? Is it better to get all of your teams to level 1, take core characters to level 5, and mixture of both? Thanks for making great content, and keep on smashing. Uh, well, what I've done with my roster, there's key characters like the Black Order that I've gotten up to level five actually there's only two characters that have got to level five thanos and ebony Ma. the rest remain around level three level four for the characters that i use a lot like the symbiotes like the black order the rest of the teams the rest of my characters i'm getting them all up to level two right now so what i did after i got some of my core teams built got everybody to level one now i'm going back through and getting a few characters that i'm using a little more often up to level three but trying to get everybody to level two so uh long and short of it is important teams get them up i don't know if you want to get all the way to level five but at least get your important teams up to level three and uh, hopefully there aren't a crazy amount of it but then after you got that done uh and i and i say important teams arena and raids those are those are what i would be focusing on right now that is what i am focusing on right now in the game but uh, get those teams up to level three at least and then everybody else up to level five and then real real key characters you could build up use those ions to get them up to level five uh next question though if I can bring two of their Phoenix, Colossus, Cyclops, and six reds, who should I leave out? This is this is a in this is a tricky question because a uh, common thought would be to go for Phoenix, but there's 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 a couple advantages and disadvantages. So oh, the disadvantage of getting more red stars on Phoenix is that normal Phoenix is gonna take longer to survive and could potentially throw off some of the turn order that you're using uh, when you're using the X Men team trying to get her to die very soon. So it's gonna make normal Phoenix survive longer. Dark Phoenix, it doesn't affect the special because that is percent base damage. So you're not getting a lot of benefit from red stars there. You're going to see that big benefit from red stars for Dark Phoenix when you use your ultimate. So keep that in mind. Colossus is the tank. So if you're really, really looking at Dark Dimension 3, if you haven't done that yet and looking to take Phoenix and Colossus in there, uh, he's going to help her to survive a little bit longer. So Colossus would be very good. And then the damage... Cyclops is also a good uh, candidate because of his damage and uh, the damage and his health. You want him to survive. So uh, Phoenix, Phoenix is a very possible choice. But like I said, there are some advantages, disadvantages. If you're cool with those disadvantages, then go with Phoenix. If you're not, then I guess we'll go with process of elimination and go with Colossus and Cyclops. But uh, this, this is not a very clear cut answer for me because uh, all of these, you can make an argument for all three of these characters. But I think... I think I would go uh, Colossus and Cyclops, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Depending how often you get that ult off on Phoenix, I guess. Hello, Valley. Recently got Thor to seven red star. Are there any T4s worth putting on him? My Asgardians are a Blitz and War go to. Thanks. So uh, Blitz and War, I don't know if you want to be using a lot of T4s on those kind of teams, unless, unless you're really hardcore into War. Uh, before you do Thor, I know he's got seven red stars. Make sure you have an arena set properly. Uh, as far as offense, at least make sure you can win on offense against a lot of the uh, other teams in your shard, and then make sure you're good on raids. After that, that's when I would go to War, and that's when I would go to Thor. Now, the two, there's two T4s that I like. I think I like his passive a little better with a little extra damage for all of his counterattacks. I like what it does, but the community, I think, is a little more settled on the ultimate. I think those are one and two in in my book as well so i don't think either version would be wrong if you want to go ultimate then passive or passive then ultimate but those are my top two uh, choices for his t4s and hopefully there's enough value there in ward that it would be valuable to really make use of that seventh red star brother congratulations again on that one 
was Remedex ever in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, specifically episode, uh, series two, episode five, or uh, I guess season two, episode five, The Mole at 1309 Uncanny? No. And I tried to look for that. I guess it's not available on YouTube, so I'm going to have to look for it in another place. But guys, if you have a screenshot, let me let me see that on Discord. I, I'm very curious to see what this actor looks like, but I, I don't think it was uh, actually Remedex, but I could be wrong. I'm going to have to send him a message right now. All right, Valley Flying symbiotes are running rapid in my arena shards. I need some good punch up options or a hard counter. So uh, currently I'm trying to AOE them down, trying to get screen first, then keeping AB alive. So uh, two hard counters for the symbiotes. First is the Brotherhood. Magneto's uh, ultimate going off very soon is what's going to help that team to get blinded and not get a lot of your, your health down into the reds, which means that they're not getting all their turn meter, which means you can pick them apart. So Brotherhood is a hard counter. Brotherhood 2.0 let me let me uh preface that by saying that and another good one that i've used in blitz haven't used in arena though uh and able to punch up against the symbiotes a full symbiote team is aim so those are the two that i'd go with for hard counters brother but uh yeah hopefully, hopefully that helps you and hopefully that gets you uh killing those uh pesky symbiotes in your arena shard all right valley blind love your content thank you brother mine is a question uh as a thought and a question in one do you reckon it would be mix the game play up thereby making it more interesting and refreshing if you could place your team in any of the 10 spots but still have a five team limit also this could pass on the dev so uh as far as choosing 10 and then the, the ai just randomly picks five I think this would be really, really fun in uh, PvP. Uh, maybe you get an awesome team that you pick. Maybe you have to learn some other characters that you weren't expecting and uh, AI just randomly chooses these ones wrong. I think that would add a little bit more to uh, some of these pre-picked teams because I know with the matchmaking going on right now, it's, it's a lot of Black Order versus Black Order. So picking 10 and, and having them randomly uh, choose five from that 10, I, th I think that would make PvP really cool so hopefully that is a suggestion they look at and hopefully it's a hopefully maybe maybe this is a solution for to have the community like pvp i don't know uh valley fine greens from canada just wonder if you're hearing anything on another orb opening event saved up a bunch and one of them should keep saving them so same answer as before uh not sure but there there was I, I believe there was two. There, there may not have been two, but they usually happen every so often. But like I said to the uh, other question, any any orbs that you need, the contents of right now, do not save them. Open them right now. If you can afford to wait, it's not going to make that much of a difference on your roster or, or anything that you're able to do in the game. Save it. And uh, for for in just in case, there's another orb opening event coming up. All right, uh, Valley, stay classy. Thank you, brother. You as well. Let's let's keep the Valley Cup classy, ladies and gentlemen. Name one tune you wish you brought out of the basement and made useful. Pretend you are the developer. How would you change them to make it work? Keep up the good work. All right. Uh, basement? I think of Nebula in the basement of a character that I would want to be better than she is right now. And I, I don't think I have a very strong Nebula, so it's not any selfish reason. I just, I just want to see her do well at one point in a one-on-one -on -one matchup this was before a lot of characters like like black bolt like x23 came around she was one of the best one-on-one -on -one characters so uh what she was missing back then she had some evades she had the ability to revive she she had a bunch of stuff that she did but uh she was really severely lacking damage so i think they could they could make more use of this evades make her a little uh have some other effects, maybe have her do an AOE attack, maybe call a ship and uh, rain down damage or something. But but really, I think what she needs is an adjustment to her base stats, maybe making her even faster, upping her speed, definitely upping her damage, maybe even upping her armor. But uh, I, I I think for this, I would I would choose Nebula, brother. Uh, Valley, great news. Pulled my first seven red star tune after 900 plus dang, and it is drum roll, Ant-Man. Congratulations. He, he has his daughter Cassie in the game right now. So not, not the worst pull. Before this news update, I would have been a little disappointed. Now I'm excited to have a high rank on a new meta team character. My question is, 
Uh, where do you think he ranks on the Pim Tech team as as far as importance with Red Stars? Thanks for being awesome. Uh, I, I, he's, he's not the most important. I think the most two most important are going to be Ghost because of the, the healing she does is going to be based on her health. And I think the main damage dealer for this team is supposed to be Yellow Jacket. So uh, I think those are the two that you would want Red Stars on if you had a choice. But Ant-Man is not the worst because he does kind of off tank when Cassie gets low on health, kind of saving her daughter. I still like that mechanic in the game, but uh, not the worst, uh, but you know, it's, it's not something in your control. So build up that team. I don't know if I would go all the way to the orange level, but definitely get them up to gear 12 and uh, see what they do. I think we need to see a little more information. All we have is three members of the team right now. So it's hard to say how meta they're going to be, but uh, yeah, build them up. I don't think there's anything wrong with building them up right now. Uh, at least at gear 12. So stop there and, and let's see what we see with the other characters once they're released. Hey, Valley. So I'm currently on node seven of DD3. The second Iron Fist dropped. So I'm trying to get Shuri up to 14. Yeah, good, good luck with that Iron Fist. It could be very, very uh, tough. Node eight is tough too. So hopefully you get brailed up Shuri. Hopefully that helps you. But I'm curious how I should place my Cosmics in nodes nine through 12. Have Ebony Maw, Thanos, Hella, Minerva, soon to be a black boat. How should I place them? Thanks for helping the MSF community. So one, one way of thinking is Thanos is the tank. You want to place him on the end. The rest of the characters, you want to protect them. But for Dark Dimension 3, I think the way you want to go is using Thanos as the energy battery. He's, he's going to be, he's not going to be empowered. So he's giving out energy to cosmic characters anytime an enemy dies. And I think the two characters that you want getting a lot of energy, Minerva and Ebony Maw. So I would have him adjacent to both of those characters. I don't think the placement of black bolt and and hella matter too much but i would want thanos right next to minerva right next to ebony maw so he's giving out energy to those two characters so that they could do their attacks with percent based damage because that is very very important in dark dimension 3 so hopefully that helps brother let me know how it goes for you next question what name should we give the mini uniques i've, I've heard a little bunch of them floating out there the gear 15 uniques the micro uniques I, I don't know if anyone has really stuck yet. I've, I've heard people calling him different things. So uh, I don't know. What what suggestions do you guys have for these mini uniques? I haven't settled on one that's really like, oh, that is the one like with the mini uniques. But I, I, I'm I'm probably just going to follow the lead of community on this one. If there's a, if there's something that everybody starts calling them just just for clarification and communicating with everybody, I'm just going to call it that as well. But uh, I don't know. Well, what do what do you guys think they should be called? Let me know in the comments, guys. Uh, uh, what is up, Valley Fly? And hope you and your family are staying safe. I hope the same for you, brother. Uh, so, assume with the next update, uh, we would get at least to get to see what Dark Dimension 4 looked like. My assumption was wrong. Do you know if we'd be like Dark Dimension 4 with 4 Global, 4 Cosmic, 4 City? I heard mention of specific nodes tied to legendary characters. This is true. Uh, what does the layout look like? So, uh, this, this question came up before I did the interview with Taiji, who data mined the nodes. Now, if you remember, he said he needed two maps. One was for all the node information. He does not have that, but the other map has all the wave information. So while while we're kind of assuming based on what we heard in the strike time and what we've seen in Dark Dimension 3, what we can expect from Dark Dimension 4, uh, the waves on there are correct. But uh, yeah, what it looks like on the site right now is the first three nodes are universal. The next nine nodes, three for each of these, Cosmic, Global, and City, uh, they could be in whatever order, but if it's the same uh, order as Dark Dimension 3, uh, global cosmic then city and then the final three nodes are legendary so that, that's what uh, it's looking like right now that's what he's uh using for the maps right now on msf.gg based on what we've seen before but uh yeah we we don't know this initially and in the strike time episode where they talked about dark dimension 4 they did say specifically there's gonna be nodes that just require legendaries and there's and the other nodes you're not gonna be allowed to use legendaries so uh, that's that's what we know so far. But for the map information, uh, you could check out msf.gg, see what he's come up with so far. But the wave information on that site is correct right now, guys. Uh, Valley, who would you take in for second round of DD3 Global? Currently have Phoenix, Mr. Sinister, Colossus, Scientist Supreme, Shield Trooper, and Sabretooth. Growing through the first time, I felt I really needed either Karao Control or three tanks and a better uh, healer. Phoenix, uh, if, if I had one to pick for that node, it would be Emma. Emma Frost would be the one that would bring it to those global nodes. Although, for node 8, which is very challenging, Magneto works very well on that node. Magneto and uh, Mystique work very well on that node. So, if, if you plan to use those characters after you're done with Dark Dimension 3, 
You could build up Emma. You could build up Magneto. You could build up Mystique. Uh, but I, I would limit it to characters that you're thinking about building up just for, uh, uh, not just for that game mode, but outside of this game mode and using them later on after this is done. Hey, Valley, another question. With the rumor of Yelena coming at some point, as well as Red Guardian, Black Widow, who else is on the team? Uh, who are your early guests that would complete the team? Is Taskman on their team? Or another character. So I've actually heard, which is kind of weird dude, with a wave one Avengers tag, that uh, Captain America and Hawkeye are supposed to be moving on to this uh, Red Room type team. Not sure if that's true or not, but uh, yeah, well, we'll see what happens with it. But uh, that would be a five man team and it would be very interesting to see what happens to Hulk at this point. Uh, it kind of would align with some of the rumors that Hulk uh, is going to be having his own Hulk team in 2021 sometime. So maybe, maybe the Wave 1 Avengers are starter team and then every Everybody gets moved off to another team but uh, that that's that's what i'm thinking is gonna happen uh but we'll, we will see it's just kind of my assumption based on some things i've heard but nothing nothing from the normal rumor sources or anything official with that that's just kind of uh yeah, I, I don't remember even where I heard that, so I don't know how valid it is. Uh, next question. Would you be able to get an interview with Tadano Mac Japan? I'm sure the whole community would like to find out more about the number one player in MSF. So I think Tadano Mac actually has some contact with Remenex already. So uh, if he's not going to do that, maybe... I'll try to do that, but I think he's trying to line up an interview with Tadano Mac, so I don't want to step on his toes for that one. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. If he does something, then then I won't do it. But if he doesn't, then maybe that's a possibility. Uh, Valley Fly, and I've, I've finished my Stark Tech upgrades a little bit ago. I have a nice stockpile of Alliance credits. I forgot they're spendable at the very bottom of the war store. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people forgot that you can spend it for different things. Would you suggest spending these credits on? Options are 500 war credits. 200 alliance or for 2k 350 elite war credits for 2.8k or 2k elite four credits for 6,000 alliance credits uh thanks for going over these every week really appreciate it so uh i think it's gonna be different for everyone some people need those war credits more to purchase some of these characters to unlock other characters to get some really good characters like sinister like x23 uh other people are gonna need more war credits for that gear in that uh that new uniques i, I don't even know what we're calling them micro uniques i don't know but for those new ones they're gonna want to open that so you can get in dark dimension three or dark dimension four with those micro uniques and then some people are going to want to pull more red stars and leak uh, four credits so you can get more uh red stars in your character so i don't think it's a, i don't think it's a uh thing that goes flat across the board for everyone i think it's going to be based on your individual situation and what you need uh right now what i'm doing currently i'm currently just hoarding them and if i need some alliance credits or war credits or or more uh, red star orb those elite fours then i'll use it on that but I mean, i'm kind of hoarding it right now and just using it as needed so that that probably is my recommendation but it's going to be very roster dependent what you're doing uh, Valley greens from Atlanta, which is changing colors in more way than one. I'd love to see characters uh, by a table of characters by type bio mutant uh, tech and by dark dimension three number to minimize resource waste and get us ready for dark dimension four. So uh, I think the, cr the closest thing we would have to that is some of the sorting options we have on dark on uh, msf.gg. But uh, that would be a good uh, good prior, prior to, prioritization list for Dark Dimension. What character is the best for one? What character is the best for two? What character is the best for three? We don't know four yet, but that, that would be a good thing for some of these uh, newer players coming along with some of these newer characters that weren't available at the time than when I passed it. So uh, that, that, that would be a cool thing to look at. But for now, uh, whatever's on msf.gg is probably the best place to go sorting characters by type. All right, Valley. Oh, this is a long question. Hope you're doing well. Been enjoying your content and your jujitsu tournaments. Keep on smashing. I'm trying my best, brother. Try not to uh, keep getting it hurt. But my question comes from today. Literally, seven star in the chaos theory, and I have a choice to take someone to four to six. Who would you pick from? Hella, Phoenix, Ebony Ma, Venom, or Scream to five? Uh, I don't have six gold stars. Uh, hold or hold the gold promos. I have uh, Symbiote, Spider-Man, Carnage, Black Bolt. Uh, Thanos already has six stars, so these picks would all complement my arena raid, Dark Dimension three, and best war teams by uh, usage. Maw is probably my most used, 
but you know kid character survivability appreciate the advice dude so i don't know if i would i would really push hard for any of these characters to six there's a few that i would take to five and based on your usage i think i would definitely go ma up to five but i don't know if i would use those silver promotion credits on ma i don't know if i would go with the uh, gold promotion credits to get ma up to six or to seven same thing with the symbiotes i might I, de depending on your usage if you're using a full symbiote team and you don't have enough stars on venom or scream i'll probably take them up to five if you don't have them uh, and, and especially scream because you don't uh, scream to five so that, that's something you could look at as well but uh, i think you could wait on phoenix and unless you're using hella a lot and i don't know who's using her a lot nowadays you might want to wait on hella but my choice my my picks would be ebony ball based on what you said about you're using her him a lot or uh scream and venom i, I would get i would use silver promotion credits on them I'd probably save my gold promotion credits on uh, on for right now, just based on what you have and what you're using. Uh, remember, when upgrading characters, you want to look. Are you are are you doing everything that you want in arena? Are you doing everything you want in raids? If you are, you probably can just hold and save and do more luxury type picks. Uh, but if but if you're not, I would I would definitely focus on the character that would turn things around for you in arena or turn things around for you in the raids. Uh, next question. Hey, what's up, brother? Do you think it's time Ultron gets some love? Doctor Doom is getting red stars from an unlock. Do you think they should do the same for Ultron? Five gold, two red for the first run, seven gold, four red for the second run. Just add red stars to players that already have finished Dark Dimension 2. What are your thoughts on this? Keep up the great work for helping the community. And the next question is pretty much the same thing from California. A simple question. Now that we know Doom comes with red stars, do you think we can expect red stars for Ultron? So uh, I, I don't think we're going to get red stars for Ultron anytime soon. Uh, from what the devs... And I don't know if it's true, but from what the devs are saying, it's obvious that they think that Red Stars on Ultron would make him way overpowered at this point in the game. So their, their kits are slightly different, and uh, the Red Stars really help Ultron. I think they help him more than Doom, but I'm not sure. Doom is, Doom is definitely a ticking time bomb. So uh, I think at some point we can get some stars for Ultron, but I think... I think at this point, the devs still think it would break the game if they put red stars on Ultron. That's how powerful he is. All the all these years are, they are many months later, uh, still very, very strong and uh, still hesitant to put red stars on him. So I, I don't think it's going to be anytime soon, but uh, I, I could be wrong on that one. Uh, what happens when you both get a bleed and a regeneration? Does one go before the other? So I have not looked into this. So guys in the comments, let me know if you have some valid information on this that is tested. But what I would think just logically, and, and sometimes logic doesn't apply with the, with the order of operations in this game. But I think that if you got bleed first and then regeneration, it would go bleeds, then regeneration. If you got regeneration placed on and then bleeds, it would go regeneration, then bleeds. That, that would make the most sense in my mind. But I don't know if you guys if you guys have some uh, evidence either way, uh, let me know in the comments, brother. Uh, Valley got a question. I have all symbiotes gear 14. My anti venom is gear 13. I have 23 alien spores. My symbiote team is 223k uh, and a lot of auto nodes in Ultimus 7.5. My question is, should I take my anti venom into gear 14 or save the alien spores for gear 15? So. Uh, this this kind of goes back to what I said on one of the previous questions. If you're doing everything you want to in Arena, if you're autoing, doing everything you want in Ultima 7, then just save. I would still collect those alien spores. You're going to need them, especially if uh, you're planning to get into Dark Dimension uh, 4 anytime soon. So uh, save them unless you need Anti-Venom stronger than where he is. Then I would definitely build them up. And if you're thinking of if you're not done with Dark Dimension 3, and you're you're still looking to do some city lanes i think he's a very good option for city so uh with that said it's gonna be based on what you're clearing and what you're having trouble with if you're having trouble with nothing then 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 keep collecting them and save them wait till we know more about dark dimension 4 and what is the best teams but if, if you're not then then yeah use it uh morning valley with pim tech to be the great dd team do you recommend immediately taking them as high as possible so they can get ready for dark dimension 4 when it's unlocked also you see you see them as a decent war defense team now I, I think they can be decent on war defense i think i'm gonna like them better as an offense team but no i would not take them there immediately as high as possible uh where i took my uh pim tech team to and just just the three that's in the game right now ant-man wasp and stature they're up to uh 12 at the max i think stature is not even there yet but that's all i'm taking on there right now no orange gear on these characters and unless you're close to level 80 i probably wouldn't worry too much 
on that but yeah hold off hold off till we know more information uh let's let's let somebody else go in there figure out what are the best teams and then then we'll start giving all the recommendations for the community i know there's a lot of people that are really pushing to get in there as quick as possible so they can make some good selections for the community although although i'm not sure if scopely announced that the first person through dark dimension 4 would be getting any type of rewards or choosing any rewards for the community like they did with dark dimension 2 and 3 so uh who knows but i, I would wait on building up your pim tech team just just a little bit to see uh just have someone test them as a full team Greetings, Valley. I'm swiftly approaching the city nodes of DD3. Would like to know which symbiote to take in as a third. I have symbiote Spider-Man Carnage at 14, conflicted between Venom and Anti-Venom as a third. Anti-Venom. Anti-Venom is the way to go. Venom will also work, but I think Anti-Venom will work better. So that's what I'd go first. Venom should be the fourth, and then Scream would be last uh, of the symbiotes, in my opinion. Valley, what is up from Niagara Falls, Canadian side, Canada in the house, brother. Just wondering, what are your opinions on the Pimtech team now that Dark Dimension 4 have several Elsa Bloodstones uh, as several show? Several Elsa Bloodstones will be on one of the unrestricted nodes and one of the global nodes. Won't this make their evade mechanic a little useless? Keep on smashing. So th that's kind of the problem with this team, with the with the Pimtech team. Their, their stats aren't that crazy and they rely a lot on evade. So if there's a character like Elsa Bloodstone, that uh, kind of goes through, plows through those evades with her, uh, with the way she has, I think it's her passive or is it her special? I don't know. One of her moves, if, if a character evades, she's going to hit him back. So uh, with, with characters like Elsa Bloodstone, it could be a problem for these uh, Pimtech team, which is why I'm recommending, everybody just wait, just wait, build them up, build them up as far as you want until 12, put up as much uh, level in them as, or level, level them as much as you want. But uh, yeah, just just wait. Don't don't build them up yet. Let's see. Let's see what happens. And we also don't know the full full map of Dark Dimension Four. There's only one of the two that's needed to determine everything in Dark Dimension Four. So uh, there's still one missing. So we we still have some incomplete information. So wait, wait on them. I, I'm I'm not sure about them. Their stats are their stats don't really uh, look that crazy. So they rely a lot on their buffs, and they need that full team for that. So I don't know if anybody's really play tested that yet or uh, no, no none of the community i'm sure the devs have but none of the community has play tested this team yet uh valley flying love all the content thank you for all you do for the community anyway was wondering if it has ever been discussed with the devs about being able to combine some excess resources to upgrade to the next tier oh my goodness this has been talked about so much and uh, it's been talked about for pretty much since global launch uh being able to combine things like your t2 3 3 ability mass we didn't have t4s at the time but uh some of the gear pieces some of the green gear upgraded to blue some of the blues upgraded to purples uh it's been talked about for a while and we haven't really heard too much communication so i think they're hesitant on this i think they just want you to wail harder to get the gear you want and not upgrade so uh, if I think if they had a way to monetize this and make money from this, they would do this. But I think this this just lets them sell less stuff. So I, I don't think they're in a rush to do this. But it has been mentioned to them a lot. Uh, what's up, brother? Now that Pemtech team is conquered here to conquer Dark Dimension, are they worth? Excuse me. Are they worthy enough to be used over other global tools like Emma Frost and Sinister and DD3, or should I go the safer user route? I already have Phoenix at 14, but don't have anyone else at the moment. Uh, I don't know who to pair her with yet and want to do it the most efficient way possible. So it takes Dark Dimension 4 into consideration as well. So Dark Dimension 4 is kind of a wild card. And even with Dark Dimension 4 uh, in the game, or not in the game, totally, parts parts of it are in the game, uh, I, I would still just focus on Dark Dimension 3. So with Phoenix, I would still go either Emma Frost or Colossus. Colossus is probably my top pick. Emma would be my next pick. I wouldn't worry about the Pym Tech team because you already have one character ready getting another character ready and then maybe another character so two more characters instead of five more characters is going to be a lot less resource intensive especially if it turns out that someone takes this pim tech team in to dark dimension four and they're not all that so uh that would save you a lot of resources so keep I, if i was in your shoes right now i would build colossus then i would build elma frost and then let's see how much trouble Dark Dimension 3, those global nodes still are. Node 7 and Node 8 are going to be rough. But uh, yeah, I, I would go the conventional route right now until we get more information on DD4. Greetings from Spain. What is up, brother? Love your content. Thanks for uh, being an example of positivity and influence others with your work. Yes, positivity. 
Positivity is so much better than negativity. It, it's, 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 it's creates a much better feeling. Anyway, uh, is a, in that matter of thinking about streaming, recording in my free time, any advice? Also, what's, uh, also what over is your recommendation? So, uh, if you want any advice, I would say just do it. I think the best advice is just doing it. You're going to make a lot of mistakes and hopefully you just learn from those mistakes. If, if you watch a lot of my early videos, there's a lot that has changed since then, and it's just the process of evolving over time. And I still make mistakes, but uh, I, I try to learn from them. So the, the best way to get and do that and make mistakes is just to do it. So uh, do that and put up videos. Uh, I use OBS to record, to screen record. I use photo uh, Adobe Premiere to uh, do my editing. And th those are my main programs. I, I use Streamlabs OBS to stream. So. Uh, start with that, but just make videos, brother. And uh, after you've got a, a bunch of other videos, uh, let me know, and then and then we can look at them and uh, make some uh, recommendations there. Non MSF related, though. Do you think Ghost will be a safe investment in tier 14 and tier 15? Seems like DD4 mandatory, like Symbiote Spider Man was for Dark Dimension 3. Thanks for everything and keep smashing. So, kind of like I've been saying with the rest of these questions, not sure about this full Pimtech team yet. Uh, you, uh, you could, I think I would be safe building Ghost up to tier 12, but I'm going to let somebody else go in there with that Pim Deck team, see how well they do. Maybe they smash it. Maybe they do everything that uh, they were built to do, or maybe they're a little disappointing. Uh, you're going to have to build up five characters to, to know that they're either worth it or a disappointment. So I would let someone else do that right now. So wait on Ghost. I, I don't know if it's a safe investment to, for tier 14 or 15 or 13 for that matter. So when she comes in a game, I would have no problem building up to 12, but uh, you might you might want to wait. Just save everything. I don't think there's a lot of harm in saving, uh, putting resources onto Ghost, brother. And that is it for the questions from the mailbag. But... Uh, Drew, we, we've heard, uh, Drew has some rumors on tap. So Drew, what is the latest that you have heard, brother? What rumors are floating around? Ah, Valley, my slaves, they've fallen off. But it seems like the biggest and most accurate rumors nowadays, they are coming from the chat on your live stream. Correct about Ant-Man and Wasp, the gothic team for Spider-Man, still a rumor floating around. And now the latest hand. Being required team and do more was quite intentional. Yeah, could this mean a rework? Could this mean that they are the next legendary unlock? Who knows? Leave me your guesses in the comments though, chat. That is all for now. It is frothy time. But don't worry, I'll be back. So hand being required in Doom Chapter 2 is not an accident. It's very, very intentional. Well, what could this mean? I think I think Drew laid out the two most uh, probable scenarios. Maybe a rework coming to this team, which would make Boomer very, very happy. Or maybe, maybe it's not Pimtech that unlocks this. Maybe they're a legendary unlock. I don't know. That one seems a little more, less likely considering all of these hand characters have been very formable for a while. But let me know your thoughts. Maybe they are the next unlock. Who knows, guys? Leave your comments or leave your guesses in the comments. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. Check out the links down below that support the sponsors, guys. Blue Stacks, all the other sponsors. And check me out every morning on Twitch. I stream every weekday morning there. So hopefully you can stop by and have some fun with the rest of the Valley Club, guys. Give me a Hulk fist bump before you go. And make sure you subscribe. Smash that like button, notifications, watch everything, guys. Hulk fist bump, Valley flying, out.